Well, today on Nation, it's story time with Jersey. If you are in window cleaning or pressure washing or any type of services, let's talk about the good and the bad, and let's go over some stories. Let's have a little fun, but stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Uh, hopefully you're having an amazing day. Hopefully you're having an amazing spring. And maybe this is your first time checking out the show. So thanks. Have a look around. Hopefully you find that there's 240, almost 250 episodes. Yeah, 250 episodes. All 30 minutes long. It's been going on for over four years. And yeah, go back. Listen, watch, binge away, and tell me that you're binging. Because I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. Uh, that's how I make my cheddar. So a lot of you, um, by the way, uh, will put orders in and be like, dude, I just want to thank you for the content, blah, blah, blah. It's so awesome when you guys tell me that, um, hundred, hundred percent makes my day. So thank you for everybody who lets me know. And if you want to rep or if you want to give me a virtual high five, or if you just want to be absolutely amazing, then let me put your orders in. Cause you're going to order anyway, right? Big or small doesn't matter. You can even text me and be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Run it. And I'll run it. Cost you nothing extra. I put it in for you. I get credit. And it's a virtual high five of awesomeness. So my number is 862-312-2026. It's a cell phone. Text. Uh, call if you want. I text more during the day because I'm on the phone all day. But let me know. I would love to be your rep. It's literally what I live for. So please do let me know. And uh, as I always give another shameless plug here, if you haven't gotten the American Window Cleaner magazine, where what are you doing? Why have you not gotten the magazine yet? I know you're amazing. I know you're awesome. And I know having a magazine in your hands with posters and stickers and everything else mailed to your door every single month would be amazing. So maybe you go to awcmag.com dot com and get a subscription just search american window cleaner magazine and get yourself a subscription be amazing and tell me you got a subscription because i can see when they come in that's also uh, absolutely amazing it's like a double high five yeah anyway shameless plugs are done you know all that stuff if you're going back to watch the episodes too it's 250 episodes of me telling you all that stuff so I apologize in advance, but that's what I live for is putting in sales, getting subscriptions for American Window Cleaner Magazine. That's what I do, man. Uh, but today we are going to be talking about some stories that I've had in my career. And I always think it's fun to tell stories. I always think it's really interesting to hear and read and everything about stories that happen in window cleaning. My foot is stuck. I'm moving my foot. Sorry. So if uh, if you see, I'm going to do some live content. I'm going to do some TikToks. By the way, I'm on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't dance. Not yet. Uh, I haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, but uh, yeah, so I I think that it's absolutely amazing because we all get it. Like everybody who is in window cleaning or pressure washing or whatever industry you're in, we understand it. We're like we're dealing with the public. We're dealing with customers in a home service type thing, right? So um, going to somebody's house, uh, going to a business, uh, dealing with property managers, there are some really, really interesting stories, we'll say. Uh, so by the way, if you have your own story, share it. Uh, this video will be on YouTube. Uh, put it in the comments on YouTube. Start a Facebook post in Pro Window Cleaning or anywhere else. And uh, let me know because I think it would be absolutely amazing to uh, hear. But with that being said, a few of these stories are good and a few of them are bad. So... But either way, a story is a, a good story. Maybe you've heard these already, but maybe you haven't. These are like stories I've grazed on, by the way. Again, four years of doing this, I've probably mentioned some of this stuff. But 
these are like more in-depth versions. And I'm going to start off with a good one. Um, I always tell people, always tell people that you need to be active in finding new customers. There's passive and active, uh, marketing, advertising, everything, right? Like uh, passive is like referrals, right? You don't do anything, they just come to you. Uh, passive is, uh, Facebook is kind of on the mid range, but something you don't really have to do. If people see the ad, they call you like really like a, um, uh, Facebook ad would be in a passive a EDDM would be passive, right? There's certain things that you put out there and then those people have to take it on themselves to then call you, contact you, whatever, but sprinkle in some active stuff and that's going to change your game. Active means you're contacting them directly, asking, selling, all that, right? Active would be like if you're selling route, you're going door to door uh, on the route stuff, right? It's uh, cold calling. It's uh, property management contacting, right? You could do uh, uh, cold bids, but you're contacting the property manager yourself. After you do the bid, now you're active. You're passive and active, right? One of the things I'm a big, big, big fan of is contacting janitorial companies, cleaning companies, that type of thing, right? Because a lot of times they don't do window cleaning. They just don't. They don't do window cleaning. They'll do like inside stuff and they'll usually butcher it. But the outside stuff, they're not going to put uh, the, the cleaning lady that's on that property on the outside on like a three or four story building, right? So they're going to be subbing that stuff out unless the cleaning company has their own window cleaning division, which is pretty rare. If you look at all the cleaning people, janitorial things, there's a lot more of those and there are companies that do both, right? So I always would call them. Uh, it's one of my people. Uh, by the way, I always like to talk about getting new work. So I'm going to tell you janitorial companies are huge. Call them, talk like made companies, that type of service and anything else that pairs around if you contact those companies and say, hey, my name is Jersey with XYZ. I'm actually looking to sub out work. Do you have any opportunities? I would love to build a relationship. I would love to, right? If you do that, you're going to find companies that want to deal with you. And here's my story. On one of the calls that we were doing, one of the not largest, but top three, largest companies I've called left messages again you're cold calling if you don't talk to somebody they're not always going to call you back unless they have a need right so I call I get through to uh, the people who answer I said hey my name is Jersey with XYZ window cleaning I'm just calling I'd love to build a relationship with you guys and start doing some subbing for the uh, window cleaning side of things and they go, oh, uh, hold on one second. And she patches me through to the owner. And the owner answers. And she kind of says, hello? And I'm like, hey, sorry, she patched me through. My name is Jersey, blah, blah, blah. Tell her my little spiel again. Real nonchalant casual, right? I'm not, I'm not pushing to sell right away. I want to be able to help the people, right? So I give it out there. I say it all. And she goes, this is so weird. I said, oh, and I kind of laugh. I'm like in my brain, like, uh, okay, I apologize. What? She goes, no, no. She goes, I really appreciate the call, but we were literally in the middle of a conversation about how we hated the window cleaning company that we sub our work to now. We literally, there's like four of us sitting here. We're in the middle of the conversation. I stopped talking because she says I have a call that I want to take. And uh, that's how that all worked out. And uh, I said, oh. I said, oh, well, great minds think alike, right? Uh, what were you saying you didn't like about them? She goes, oh my gosh, we have a million things, but they literally smell so bad on the job sites that we get complaints every time they're there. And we're just, we don't know what to do. We have like this contract and this contract, we do these and this and all this stuff and, and these big companies, like we can't do that. I said, well, great news, I don't think we smell. That was kind of my, my, my comment. She's laughing. You can hear the people in the background laughing. I think I was on speakerphone. And she goes, well, here's the thing. She goes, I'm going to give you a property. Go ahead. Just bid this property. Give me your numbers. And uh, let's go from there. And uh, I have a ton of properties 
that we do work for, and I would love to merge out of the company we have now. I said, oh, awesome. You have a contract with them or anything? Or she, No, 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 no. It's just, you know, they sub out work for us, and we're just not going to do it, and blah, blah, blah. Awesome. Okay. The first building she gives me is a 13-story courthouse building that is the tallest in the city. Well, okay. Crap. Maybe I bit off a little more than I could chew, right? But I've contacted companies before who um, did uh, subbing of the work. And one of them was green, uh, at the time is green window cleaning, but uh, then they branched off and had a training division in green building services and uh, green safety. They, they, they train people how to do high rise window cleaning. And I've never done high rise before, 13 stories. I mean, I was looking like, oh man, can I do a lift? Oh, that would be horrible. I'm trying to get a lift up there. Oh, it's just this and this and this. And I knew those guys and I didn't know that they stopped. Oh yeah, absolutely. Give us the address. We'll do the bid. We'll do all that. If you haven't dealt with a company like that, this is not a plug for them, but they're absolutely amazing to deal with. But if you haven't done work for a company like that, you literally will call them, give them the address of the building. They do the site. They bid it. They give you everything. They tell you the price. And they say, oh, uh, you know, that price is going to be, say, um, $6,100. And that price is 10% lower than it should be or 20% lower than it should be or whatever, right? You go, great, because that's now my margin. So they gave me the price. I don't remember what the margins was years ago. 20%, it was great. It was a really pretty big chunk, I think. Maybe it was, anyway, it was a great chunk. So I called them back. I said, hey, we did a virtual site visit, did all that stuff. You know, we didn't have any questions on that one. There was one tier access, but super easy. Um, You know, uh, do they have roof access? You know, um, and then from pictures and questions, we figured out the type of anchor systems. They had a big giant, uh, a giant like roof size structure up there. So it wasn't, uh, there was no tie to back issues or anything. So it was cut and dry. I said, here's the bid. I wanted to let you know the bid as I type it up. I'm going to send you over the proposal shortly. I'll get you the packet, everything you need to know about us, blah, blah, blah. She goes, oh, great. She says, you're totally in line with uh, the other company we're using. You're actually a little cheaper. I said, "Uh, okay, cool, awesome. She goes, great. I'm going to send some other properties to you to take a look at. I said, absolutely. Send send a property over if you have it. She goes, no, I'm going to send over a couple properties. Cool. She sent over the address of 13 properties. So in turn, at the time, that was the largest contract we had for everything. There was 13 properties. There was a county contract involved. There was uh, smaller buildings. There was uh, houses. That one particular customer ended up bringing us probably, oh gosh, well in the six figures over the entire term because we had them for... 10 years, we probably did them before I sold the company. I mean, they still had them. And they were just sending us everything that they had. Hey, I got a property. Hey, I got a new construction. Hey, I got, I mean, she had so many things that she would just send over. And eventually they didn't even ask for, I mean, after like probably three months, she's like, I don't need a bid. I know where you guys are. Just do it. If anything's crazy, let me know. Send me the bill. Right. All from a con uh, contact, a call, And I just happened to call at the exact same time they were talking about how their employees, their other contracting company that they used stunk. And the reason was, was cigarettes, by the way. It wasn't body odor, it was cigarettes. So, by the way, if you ever think that everything you do in business is 100% skill, you're wrong. Because that one, hundreds of thousands of dollars over years, right? I had another contract we talked about, I'm not going to get into, was another random phone call. And it was a, a, a yearly $98,000 contract. And it was just a random phone call. Oh, yeah, cool, yeah, good timing, what's it? Right? That's a good story, but here's a bad story. We did another project that at the time was the single largest project we had ever done. And actually part of that project, we brought green window cleaning on again. And um, one of the things that we did uh, was there was a couple, uh, it was a complex, so a couple of the buildings we couldn't do uh access we had to do some rope work um the rest of it we are all doing water fed we happen to be doing this water fed and afterwards a card reader you know the kind you you do your little lanyard thing you don't get in didn't work and the guy calls me goes hey uh 
you know, I apologize we haven't sent you out that bill yet, but uh, we got this issue. We want to get it taken care of here and uh, take it out of that price before we send it to you. So, whoa, okay. What happened? He goes, well, uh, the card reader worked. You guys cleaned the windows and now it doesn't work. The card reader was like literally probably a hundred plus feet away from any windows. It was on a side of the building that was the back access, which was all brick. There was no windows anywhere around there. I was like, oh, we, we weren't anywhere by that. Card reader, you know, I saw the poles that you guys use with the water and you're shooting water all over, you know, the chemicals or whatever must have just corroded it. So there's no chemicals, it's pure water. He goes, well, it doesn't, you know, change the fact that you guys came and cleaned and now it doesn't work. Like we just want to, it's $780 for to this new re reader. I said, okay, let me do a little digging here. I'll get you a call back. Absolutely, man. I appreciate it. Sorry for all this. You know, he's, he's, he's very apologetic. I called the company that manufactures the things. I uh, found out the age of the readers, which were like 11 years old or something. The building was 11 years old. They were installed when they first went. I called the company. I got them to send me emails. I had the vice president of the company send me an email saying there's nothing that could happen in this. Uh, as, you know, sealed up things or the blah, 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 blah. I sent over full reports on pure water being like rainwater as far as their, what it is. You know, there's nothing weird about it. There's nothing. It's just anytime these things rain, they were getting rained on. I sent all this stuff and I put this proposal together. It was like 12 pages of stuff. I gave it to him and he goes, man, wow, thank you. Hey, I, I can't believe you went through all this trouble. I said, well, you know, I just, you know, obviously if it's us, I want to make sure I take care of it. But if it's not us, I want to make sure that we do our due diligence. So I'm not just blowing smoke, you know, stuff happens. I totally get that, but I just want to let you know, you know, there's just nothing that we could have done. It's, it's not possible at all. And, and I wanted to just kind of put it out there. So there was no questions. Cause I imagine you have other people you have to kind of, you know, send this to. Oh man, I really appreciate that. But it doesn't change the fact that the card reader doesn't work. So uh, we can withhold payment until you pay us or we can just take it out of the, the money. And I'm like, I just gave you this thing proving it doesn't work. He goes, well, there's no way that we're going to be convinced that it's a correlation timings lineup. At this point, I had spent hours trying to fix this thing, which it was more of a personal thing than I should have just paid the $780. I said, okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this right. I know it wasn't us. You know, it wasn't us. The manufacturer knows it wasn't us, but if it takes $780, take it off this bill in order to secure you as a great customer for the future. I'll do that. He goes, Oh man, you know that you were, you're, you know, you're the company we use and that's for, for as long as I work here, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's, it, you know, you guys have really gone above and beyond and I'm blown away. Okay, cool. We never did that job again. <laughs> <laughs> not only did it cost me $780, but I lost the contract. And I don't know that it was because he left. I don't think it was that. I think that he just felt maybe stupid that he tried to like, you know, I don't know what happened, but I called and called and called and got nothing. And then uh, I just, there was no response ever. He knew my number. He must've wrote it down. Uh, I never had the contract again. They never booked it with us again, ever. I lost the contract. It was, uh, it was in the five figures for one cleaning and uh, I lost it and it was all over his mistake. So there's a bad one. Sometimes you don't win them. Sometimes you do. It just depends. And, uh, it was, um, uh, it was what it was. So anyway, uh, another really amazing one just to kind of fix that whole thing was a contract that was my mom's neighbor at the time. Uh, they were talking somehow got on it that I was, you know, doing this window cleaning business. It was very early on. So maybe that I was starting it or something. And you know, when you start a business, everybody's kind of like, oh, he has a little thing he's doing, you know, he's a little, and, um, she goes, oh, that's great. She goes, I, uh, work with our property manager for our building like all the time. He's a great guy. I'd love to connect him. I said, well, that's really awesome. I'll set this up, set up an appointment, met the guy, super nice guy. His name was Randy. I know you're not watching Randy, but you're a, re a remarkably awesome guy. He knew I was early in and I let him know all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. He goes, well, I'd love to give you a shot. I love to kind of help people. And, uh, you know, you're fresh in the industry. I'd love to get you in. Bid this building for me and uh, let's go from there. Oh, cool. At the time, now this is before we had even done the, the cleaning contracts and things like that. This was the first commercial property that I had ever bid 
that wasn't like a route job, like commercial, right? It was uh, biannual, uh, really cut and dry building, concrete all around. It was a uh, staple building kind of in the city. It wasn't too terribly big. I think it was three stories, but it was just a really awesome building that I was like super excited for. I put this together. It took me probably a week back and forth. I went out there like three times. Ah, oh, man, I put this whole bid together and I'm like, gosh, it seems kind of high. Because again, remember, I had always heard in the commercial world, you can't charge as much as you do in houses. And I put this together and I'm like trying to go back and forth. And remember, you're not your target market. You're not your target client. So when you look at something like, ah, oh, man, there's no way he's going to pay this. They're like, it's a drop in the hat. You know, they, they spend, you know, $10,000 on light bulbs every year. They don't care about the window cleaning price if it gets done right. So I worked this whole thing up. First contract, terrible, way off. I bring it to him. He uh, he gets it. Uh, actually, I didn't bring it to him. I sent it to him. Email. This is before I made like the packets and stuff. If you got any questions, let me know. And he goes, uh, he sent me a message back. He goes, well, dot, dot, dot. I'd like to meet about this. And I'm like, uh, okay, that didn't sound like super great. So I go back on site, shake my hand. Oh, what's up, man? Hey, good. Hey, I just want to talk to you about this contract and those numbers, man. I'm like, ah, oh, see, I'm too high. I'm too high. He goes, listen, I know you're new. You know, I know this is your first commercial. And he's, he's talking. I'm like, man, I knew I messed up. I knew I should. He goes, um, I'd love to give you this contract, but I need you to double the numbers. I was like, oh, like cut the bid in half. He's like, no, 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 double the numbers. He's like, you're you're way off. You're like, this is nothing. Like you're you're too cheap. I can't I can't possibly pay you knowing that you're gonna be doing it for this. So you want me to redo the bid but double it and make it twice as much as it is now? He's like, yes, and that's a good start. He's like, that's year one. We'll see how you do. I know this is a big contract for you. If you can keep up with it, you can do it great. We'll rework the numbers, but right now, you, you, I can't I can't pay you this little. Uh, okay, yeah, let's do it. He's like, awesome, man. Uh, we'll do it. Can we get slated in? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we can. We'll do this, all this stuff. And I walked away, and this is absolutely a true story. He was a great, great, great guy. Because he brought me a bunch of buildings, but he was so transparent. Tr so transparent. If he was in a project and he's like, hey man, I need this and this done. We have this thing leaving. He's like, I'm hoping to be in this ballpark. Can you make it happen? I'd be able to let him know. After that certain time, we got janitorial accounts from him. We got uh, buildings. We got mid-rises, high-rises. He was friends with other property managers. They were talking about us. Anytime that um, uh, window cleaning came up and he was in the room, he talked about me. It was absolutely amazing. He was my number one guy that I would drop anything. By the way, on a side note, one time in, uh, it was on July 4th, there's a parade. This building's right on a parade route. Somebody had gotten in the first set of doors, the rest of it's all locked, and they couldn't get in, and took a, they left <laughs> um, a present in the stairwell. Like they couldn't find a bathroom apparently and they did this and he called me on the 4th of July and was like, dude, I need this like taken care of. I'm so sorry. It's a terrible job. Charge me whatever you want. I just need it done. I need it done today because it's just going to ruin things when people come in. It's like, so I went in on July 4th on a holiday and cleaned up someone's present and it was a mess. And it was disgusting. And I made a lot of money for that one cleaning. And he didn't care. And I didn't care because he brought me so much, right? So, yes, I had a project where the guy told me I was too cheap. Double it and gave me the contract. And, again, I made tens and tens of thousands with that guy. I mean, it was it was great. Great, great guy. So, you got a good. You got a bad. You got a connection. However it happens, you go with it, right? On another note of one more good one to kind of leave you guys with. And by the way, I want to hear your stories too. These are just some of the stories. And I know we always talk about bettering your business, but sometimes it's fun to just talk stories. Talk shop, right? Uh, this one uh, was uh, a very uh, interesting one. We had at the time a city contract. Now, I talked about the county contract, but of course the county is different than the city. We had the city contract. It was like... 21 buildings, 21 properties, maybe 21. I think that comes to mind. I think 21 buildings. Anyway, 
interesting story about, I don't know, six blocks from my office where we have uh, our commercial property, where my office is where all the offices were, the storage, the trucks, all that stuff. There was a emergency happening and it came through on something that we had, which was like a scanner reading thing. It just happened to be on Facebook or something. And I saw, oh man, I can't believe this is happening. I get in my truck and I go over there and off of one of the buildings, they have fire trucks all over, everything's blocked. And they have the ladders going up to pull a guy off of a building. It was a window cleaner, old timer, who when he went over the parapet wall, his um, uh, rope grab was actually on top or it was pinched in under where the rope came or something. It was on top of the parapet. Well, your weight is holding the rope. You can't make yourself not weigh anything to get the lanyard, to get the rope grab back down. He was stuck. But he was also too old to pull himself back up over. He didn't do self-rescue. He just kind of hung out. Well, apparently, apparently, they had seen him sitting there for quite a while because he didn't have a phone on him or he didn't whatever. He just was hanging out. And I think somebody asked, Are everything okay? And the guy goes, no, I'm stuck. Goes, oh, gosh, do you want me to call somebody? Yeah, well... All of a sudden, now it was a window cleaner, a high-rise window cleaner stuck. I mean, the town went up, fire trucks and everything, ladders, and they all went. I mean, this is like a three-story building. The guy wasn't in any peril. He just was stuck. <laughs> he was an all-timer. <laughs> so I go, and um, we're watching. You know, by the time I get there, he's coming off. You know, they got the ladders and everything. And, oh, man, it's so embarrassing, so, so bad. I go back, and I'm talking with somebody, and they're like, this is kind of like an opportunity, like, you don't want to capitalize on somebody's kind of, you know, thing, but you know, maybe there's something you can do with it. I said, this is a city contract. Like that's a city building, like blah, blah, blah. Well, the next day front page of the paper is all this guy that got stuck. I mean, the guy was probably 67. Like he was, I'm pretty sure this was the only thing he did all year by the prices that he charged and all that other stuff. So I end up calling the uh, city and I get through to the guy who ends up being like the purchaser guy. I say, Hey man, I know this is fresh. I know, you know, maybe it came down on you, you know, or something. So just tell me to go suck an egg if you want. But uh, my name is, you know, Jersey, the XYZ window cleaning. I would love to do bidding for the con. He goes, yeah, you know what? We're never having the guy back. You know, we just kind of been giving it to him. You know, uh, everybody who bids, he's like way off. You know, he's like half the price. So we just always have to go with him. And, you know, we figured it out this time. It's just not. And he told us uh, also a couple hours later that he was not going to fulfill the contract this year. And uh, he was not going to be putting in bids for the rest of the, you know, anymore. I said, well, great. You know, I would love the opportunity to, to bid, you know, blah, blah, blah. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, send me over this and this and this. We put you on the uh, approved uh, vendor list and then you bid on the contract. I said, oh, cool. Okay, so send over everything. He sends back. So that particular year, it was too late in the process to um, have a company come in and cover something about the budgeting or I don't know how it worked. Um, so he goes, we're actually bidding now for next year, but next year, you know, we're going to have this gonna be twice as dirty and this stuff's not getting done. You know, we're going to have our janitorial staff do the insides, but outsides. I said, okay. So I said, man, we're talking and back and forth. And, um, I kind of mentioned pricing and stuff. And he goes, um, are you asking me to tell you what that guy charged or what bids we've received? Kind of asked it that way. I'm like, oh no, no. I mean, Gosh, that, that would be amazing, but that's not what I'm asking. No, I'm just saying, he goes, all you have to do is ask me and I'll tell you. I'm like, why is he doing it? Like, is this a recorded line or what? I said, well, yeah, then I, I'd really love the bids. He goes, great. I'll send you all of the bids we received last year uh, or for this cleaning. I'll send it to your email. Cool, man. Awesome. I hang up. I'm like, dude, this guy, I like, ah, oh, this is so awesome. I see the bids. I know where people are going. I came in. I was like, $300 cheaper, I think, than the the second bid because I figure, well, the bid's going to go up. You know, every year they go up, but the other guy's not going, blah, blah, blah. And I get the contract. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. You know, I send this thing back to the guy. He talks about it and everything. Um, and I said to the guy, I said, man, I really, really appreciate you letting me know, you know, prices. I, I know you you, you kind of put your, your, your neck out, and I really appreciate that. He goes, no. He goes, this is city. Like, it's all public record. You just have to ask me and I can give it to you legally. I have to give it to you. I was like, oh. 
Got it. So yeah, public records. I thought this guy was doing me a favor. My mind was super geeked that I got this contract all because this guy, man, I had it in. This guy was like slipping me numbers, you know, shady in an alley. Like, hey, you need some numbers. He was slipping. Oh, it was great. And he's like, no, legally I have to. This is what we do. This is, everybody does this. Uh, it was a little awkward because I was like, I thought this guy was like, you know, my buddy. And he's like, no. He's like, no, I'm not nobody's buddy. I work for the city, man. I'm not going to be corrupt. At the time, I didn't know, and there you go. So, live and learn, and then clean some windows. But either way, that's it for the stories. If you guys got stories, let me know. By the way, if you're on TikTok, follow me on TikTok. It's like jersey underscore WCR underscore nation. Stupid, sorry. But that's what it is. Uh, follow me on TikTok. Tell me the stories. Uh, go ahead and um, send me the stories via YouTube because that's where this video will be. And, yeah, I mean, I would love it. I love stories because, again, for the American Window Cleaner magazine, I love putting the stuff in there. So if you have a really, really good story, I think we may actually even create a story time in the magazine. I think that would be really, really rad. So let me know. Send that. If you do have an awesome story, contact me but the um email if you have a story to contact reach out to us is editor at awcmag.com and if you don't have a subscription get a subscription what do you do it awcmag.com and listen i am a sales rep for windowcleaner.com i'm not a pushy rep i will tell you exactly what i want what what i want or think i'm not going to tell you what you want to hear and i'm not going to oversell you anything so if you need supplies, please do give me a try. I would love to be that one to do that for you. My number is 862-312-2026. And that's a cell phone. Text me, call me, whatever. Um, yeah. Go out there and make some amazing stories. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.